hear the words of Theodore Roosevelt. There can be no 50-50 Americanism in this country. There is room here for only 100% Americanism. Room only for those who are Americans and nothing else. How then will you serve the cause of freedom this day? for Western America. Powerful 50,000 watt clear channel KSL from Broadcast House in Salt Lake City, Utah, the United States of America. Time at the Navu Bell, 1160. Thank you, Dick. And a very pleasant good morning to you. Herb Jepko here at the beginning of our new day and our new week. And uh, we look forward very much to your call this morning, wherever you might be, on the uh, on a Sunday, the 11th day of the new year. Our calls in the first hour have uh, reached us from Waco, Texas, Columbus, Kansas, Phoenix, Arizona, uh, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, Denver, Colorado, Dallas, Texas, Hot Springs, South Dakota, and Ruidoso, New Mexico. So I'm uh, I'm very hopeful that, uh, that we'll be hearing from you this morning. Uh, we'll be helping the the program, and uh, uh, I won't be talking quite as much as usual, uh, talk too much anyway, I guess, but I, I'm hopeful that you'll have uh, some things to bring to our attention, and uh, we'd uh, appreciate very much your call this morning. Monday morning, the 11th of uh, February, and the weatherman says uh, rain and snow should decrease this morning, occasional rain and snow increasing again by late afternoon or night, and we should have snow again on Tuesday. Our highs today should be 40 to 45. Our lows tonight near 30. We'll look at weather more in detail in just a moment. And a good good morning to you. This is Herb Jepko now in our Nightcap Network newsroom with our on-the-hour report of late news brought to you by Equitable Life and Casualty Insurance Company of Salt Lake City. And now the news. In the news this morning, the terrorist kidnappers of three foreign officials in Uruguay say all three men are now in perfect health. Two of the officials have been held for more than five months. The first communique uh, since uh, British Ambassador Jackson was seized Friday says the diplomat diplomat is uh, in the jail of people but made no ransom demands. Uruguay's president has asked Congress to suspend constitutional rights for a 90-day period in order to bolster a massive search for the guerrillas and their victims. Allied military sources in Saigon say some 2,000 South Vietnamese troops, including ranger and cavalry units, have now moved into Cambodia. Their aim is to challenge communists threatening the only road link still open to the capital, Phnom Penh. Allied sources say a total of 10,500 Saigon troops are now in Cambodia, concentrating on Highway 1, which links Saigon, with the Cambodian capital. And the U.N. mediator, Gunnar Yaring, is back in the United States following a 48-hour visit to Israel. Upon his arrival in New York, Yaring was noncommittal on the outcome of talks with Israeli leaders, saying only that they were very interesting and uh, very useful discussions. Political sources in Jerusalem say that Yaring was given detailed proposals to put before the Arab representatives at the U.N.-sponsored peace talks. A fourth person has been found tarred and feathered in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Police say the men were apparently victims of the outlawed Irish Republican Army. Two of the men were tied to lampposts. The other two were bound to a fence railing and a bus stop sign. Identical signs were tied to each, and authorities say the IRA leaflets were also found scattered at the feet of the two victims. A skiing holiday ended in tragedy for two Texarkana, Texas families Sunday. Four persons died when their single-engine plane crashed near Aspen, Colorado. Dead are Preston Ernest, the pilot, his wife Jane, 32-year-old Betty Lou Kennedy, and 14-year-old Sandy Kennedy. Uh, Mrs. Kennedy's husband and another family were following in another plane. The crash apparently was caused by engine trouble. 87-year-old French high fashion queen Gabrielle Coco Chanel died at her Paris apartment Sunday. The hotel doctor was summoned with Miss Chanel complained she was not feeling well, but before he could arrive, however, she died. 
members of Miss Chanel's fashion and perfume company say her health had been good of late. Her 1971 spring fashion collection is slated for showing this month. U.S. Army spokesman in Okinawa saying about 100 demonstrators wielding bamboo poles and armed with rocks have smashed windows in the offices and barracks of the U.S. military chemical area. The demonstrators are protesting American plans for the removal of poison gas from the island. U.S. troops dispersed the demonstrators. No uh, gas weapons were stored in the area of attack, however. And a severe earthquake has rocked New Guinea, but there were no immediate reports of damage or casualties this morning. We'll look at weather in just a moment after this now from Equitable. My Caps, you know that Equitable Life and Casualty Insurance Company of Salt Lake City, Utah, has been a major sponsor of our nightcap program and many of our nightcap rallies throughout the United States. This has been made possible by the outstanding acceptance of our nightcaps of the Nightcap 105 plan and the Nightcap Medicare Companion plan offered by Equitable. The Nightcap Medicare Companion plan pays up to $7,174 in specified benefits not covered under the basic government Medicare program. The cost is unbelievably low at only $4 or $5 per month depending on your age. Now, in addition to paying basic hospital benefits not covered by Medicare, the plan offers many other outstanding benefits. The companion plan pays regardless of any other insurance you may have, and it's good anywhere in the world. The companion plan is available to NICAP listeners age 64 and over regardless of health. That's right, regardless of health, regardless of the condition of your health, and it's guaranteed renewable for as long as you live. If you're an ICAP listener over the age of 64 and have not taken advantage of this remarkable, equitable NICAP offer, please send your name, age, and address to NICAP Medicare, Box 660, Salt Lake City, Utah. And I'll see that you receive all the details by return mail and no salesman will call. Write to me today, NICAP Medicare, Box 60, Salt Lake City, Utah, zip 84110. Weather in the news for uh, Tulsa this morning, generally fair through today, turning partly cloudy and a little cooler Tuesday with winds light and variable. This morning, our lows in the upper 20s, highs today in the mid-50s. For Salt Lake and vicinity, rain and snow decreasing to a few showers by later this morning. Occasional rain and snow increasing again this afternoon and night, becoming snow by Tuesday. Our lows near 30, highs today 40 to 45. Tuesday, somewhere in the upper 30s for a high. The probability of the rain or snow, about 30% today, and increasing to about 50% by Monday night. Currently 41 degrees downtown Salt Lake City, and that's the news at midnight. You've been listening to 5 Minutes of Late News, brought to you by Equitable Life and Casualty Insurance Company of Salt Lake City. Our next on the hour report of late news coming up one hour from now this morning here on the Nightcap Radio Network. Brought to you again by Equitable Life and Casualty Insurance Company of Salt Lake City.
Thank you, and this is Herb Jepko welcoming you to uh, another full morning of conversation here on the happiest side of the day. We're looking forward to your phone call right now. Colorado. The phone number is 524-2510. 524-2510. 
this morning at 11.30 at the Neil O'Donnell Archway. Uh, this is located at 372 East on 1st South here in Salt Lake City, and uh, all of you are certainly invited. And uh, I spent uh, several hours with Dottie this afternoon, and uh, uh, she wanted me to be sure and invite all of you, and uh, hope certainly that you'll be able to come. Uh, she would like to meet all of you and thank all of you certainly for your kindness over the past weekend and uh, I know she's up listening this morning and uh, strange thing you know Bill's been with us for a relatively short time six months isn't a long time I guess uh, as Lynn uh, expressed so very well he adapted to the program and went out so very quickly and so very easily uh, because of the person he was and uh, it didn't take uh, any effort on his part to to feel uh, uh, toward the program as uh, we would hope anybody that is with us uh, feels. Uh, this was just better. And, uh, uh, they had been, Dottie and Bill had been nightcaps for a long, long time, long before the, the uh, uh, joining uh, with the program. So uh, I know that... Uh, Bill's uh, family and Dottie's family that uh, are with her now from out of state and uh, here in the state are, are up listening this morning and uh, and certainly appreciate your kindness to them. Well, let's uh, get into another uh, call here this morning. The, uh, uh, the Southern California line is next here. And good morning. Well, PJ, this is the guy. Look who we've got here tonight. Good morning, Dick. How are you? Fine, sir, and you? Oh, I feel pretty well considering everything. Uh, I just thought I'd like to call and uh, Louise and I say hello to you and everything. And uh, uh, did you mention the fact that we just uh, send uh, uh, Justin Stewart care of New House Building? Right, Dick. Uh huh. And, and that's all communications to uh, to. Uh, Mrs. Can I put it? Mrs. Patty? Oh, uh, no, her name is Bobby. Bobby. Bobby Curtis. Yes, Bobby. Uh, the, uh, the reason that we're using Justin, uh, some people have expressed a, a wish to send flowers, and uh, it's Dottie's uh, wish that instead of flowers, any contributions at all, that, uh, and she's not soliciting for contributions, but if a person were going to send flowers or something, she would... She would appreciate it since they'll be dead in a day's time. It's so cold here that uh, uh, she's got a young son, uh, two of them to raise, as a matter of fact. And uh, uh, so in lieu of that, well, any contributions at all should be sent in care of Justin Stewart. Uh, in house for the house family. Like, however, it's a, it's a card or something like that could come to our box number. But uh, uh, due to uh, tax reasons and, and uh, the handling of this sort of thing, why we will our attorney uh, uh, for the NIA, Justin Stewart, would be uh, uh, far more acceptable. And, and uh, uh, it Right. Just, uh, I didn't mean to go over it again, yeah. but I just didn't get it clearly. Enough. Right. I'm happy to do that for you. Uh, okay. Fine. And uh, and I just wanted to say that uh, it sounds, sounds like a... a a good program, even better than four, and uh, and uh, you're doing a fine job in spite of it all. And uh, the least we can uh, remember Bill as he was. Well, that's the way to remember him. Yeah, you know. he sure was guy. Uh, but anyway, uh, I talked long enough. I want to let someone else talk. And here's Louise. Okay, thank you. Hello, dear. Hi. Uh, know what to say. Uh, but uh, we'll be sending uh, a little pickings up to uh, give her a hand and hold her hands up for us. And uh, I don't want you to just ask and feel sorry. This is hard. I went through this when I found out about my son. And I'm going to go through it with my father. And I have to my throat, this sun is shining upon you and give you peace, and to all, and this will be good night. 
Louise and Dick Larcher in Baldwin Park, California, and uh, 24 minutes now past 12, and uh, we move next year to, uh, let's see, where haven't we been yet this morning, uh, Idaho, Nevada, Montana, Wyoming. Good morning. Good morning, Herb. Good morning. Grandpa? Grandpa. Yes. How are you? Well, fine. You know who this is? No. This is Ann Jacobs of Montana, Montana, Montana? Yes, Ann. And, uh, first, I've got a problem. I have a son that's living in San Francisco, and he got sick, and his doctor put him in the hospital for an examination, and he says that they found out that he's supposed to have cancer in one lung and a uh, brain tumor also. And uh, I don't suppose I could give you his name and ask you to some of the nightcaps would send, uh, send him a card to pray for him. Well, then we can certainly pray for him, and uh, we think his name, his address, that they would have to be sent to us uh, on the postcard so we can get it on a get well list. Okay. And everyone does it that way, and uh, it seems to be the best and more preferential way okay. to do it. Okay. Well, how have you been? And oh, I've been fine. How's uh, your wife? I suppose you got that little guy spoiled. Oh, well, it's a little girl, Anne. A little girl? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Just about a month old. Oh, I see. A month and a week is now. Oh, back. I see. It was born the 7th of the December, wasn't it? Yes, uh-huh. Oh. I heard a lady predicting that she thought it would be born the 5th of December, but she didn't make it, did she? No, but well, that was pretty close. Yes, it was. Very close. Well, Herb, thanks a lot, and... Uh, I just thought I'd ask to see what I, I should do. He's mm -hmm. quite depressed. And yeah, well, if you put, put that on a postcard and send it to us, we'll get around at the first available chance. Okay, sir. Thank you, Anne. And thank you. Good uh -huh. night. Good night. Ann Jacobs in uh, Anaconda, Montana this morning. Our Idaho, Nevada, Montana, Wyoming line and the yeah, turn around of both. Now, I'm for you. Nightcaps, you can be sure with the Power Pack Health Foods at Scheibner's Health Stores in Ogden, Provo, and Salt Lake. Ensure your nutritional needs by using all natural and organic vitamin and mineral supplements. And save during January and February and March a regular $6.95 bottle. Now for these three months, just $5.95. Stock up now at all Scheibner Health Store locations in Provo, 280 West 1st North, Ogden, 808 24th Street, and in Salt Lake at 158 South State. Scheibner's Health Stores. Our next uh, call this morning from uh, Oregon or Washington here. Good morning. Hello, Hal. Hello, Hal. Uh, this is Laura of the Washington. Yes, Laura. And much has been said, but since Mrs. Curtis is listening, uh, I just wanted to know that she had a husband that she could really be proud of, and even though I never met him, I really felt he was a friend. I enjoyed him more than any co-host she's ever had before. And uh, you uh, took your time up, too. Oh, you bet. And then I wondered if anybody had called in uh, the first part of last week, we lost another uh, nightcap listener in Spokane, Washington. That was Andy Anderson, and he had called in at least once that I know of. And uh, he, too, was a heart problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, I didn't know it. No, I don't think anybody has called. No, I yeah. kind of doubted it. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, I had one other thing, and I don't know if this is the time to mention it, but perhaps just briefly. Uh, it regards, uh, our, well, Mr. Douglas. And I just wanted to say that I, well, since he doesn't seem to feel the show is worthwhile, I can't see why he listens. I do think that he would find real friendship, though, uh, in closeness, as the rest of us do, if he would just, uh, maybe change a little bit. And, uh, I guess that's about all, except that... Uh, may I get my phone number? Uh, no. Well, I'm one of the ones that qualifies. You, you are blind? Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I told you that once before. I guess that was a long time ago, I though. I guess it was, sure. And if anybody should care to call with 
any ideas as to anything we could do for Bill's family or anything, or uh, just anyway, it's seven five four four five six five. Okay. And uh, the best of luck to all of you, and we'll keep listening. Okay, thank you, Loretta. You're sure welcome. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye. Loretta Hanson and Euphreda Washington, the Oregon-Washington line open, and we're at uh, 29 minutes now past 12 into a Monday morning. Today, the 11th day of uh, the new year, and uh, we pause here briefly for station identification. This is the Nightcap Radio Network, and you're tuned to KSL Salt Lake City. Good morning, Bill. How you doing? Fine, and you? A bit more real good. Good. I'd like to express my sympathy to the Curtis family. Big loss for us, huh? Yes, it was. We all feel the most of it. Mr. President, I'd like to ask you to uh, take care of a real good friend of mine that's in the hospital. He just gets out of the hospital and he's right back. He's already had about a month of operation. It's happened to be this afternoon. He's in traction now. He's uh, in traction now with his legs, and they're uh, having the problem with him. His name is uh, Wayne Dewey. He's just about to get out of the hospital. He's just about to get out of the hospital. He's in traction now with his legs, and he's going to go right back in. I'd also like to ask all the NASCAP to pray for the... I don't know this person here. Her name is, uh... Oli Burton. With... Papanese, Washington. So the NASCAP here in the desk will give me... Uh... Her name... This afternoon. She is real good to listen. What else is doing that word, sir? Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
so glad that you have to be there. Who can understand? It's just useful to say words, but the Lord can impart strength to people. Yes. And I'm so thankful for it. Because I know it. I have experienced it too. The blessings have come out of the body of my loved one. He was a prince before God, this I know. And uh, the journey won't be long until we will all be reunited. And in this, I find a great strength, and I'm sure she will. She will too. Yeah, sure and may the very Shekinah of the Almighty overshadow her. That's my prayer. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Smith. This is uh, Alfred Smith in Tucson, Arizona, this morning. Our uh, next call this morning from uh, Oklahoma, right here. Good morning. Good morning, Herb. Hello. This is Elizabeth Anderson in South Oklahoma. Yes, Elizabeth. And darling, I want to share something that I shared with a very great man one time, a long time ago, my father. May I? Certainly, please. The House by the Side of the Road by Sam Walter Fox. He was a friend to man, and he lived in a house by the side of the road. There are hermit souls that live withdrawn in the place of their self-content. There are souls like stars that dwell apart in a perilous climate. For a time or so that blows or towers, the highways never run. But let me live by the side of the road and be a friend to man. Let me live in a house by the side of the road where the race of men go by. The men who are good and the men who are bad as good and as bad as I. I would not sit in the scorner's seat or hurl the cynic's band. Let me live in a house by the side of the road and be a friend to man. I see from my house by the side of the road, by the side of the highway of life, the men who press with the ardor of hope, the men who are faint with strife. But I turn not away from their smiles nor their tears both part of an infinite plan. Let me live in a house for the side of the road and be a friend to man. I know there are brook gladden meadows ahead and mountains of wearisome heights that the road passes on through the long afternoon and stretches away to the night. But still I rejoice when the travelers rejoice and weep with the strangers that moan nor live in my house by the side of the road like a man who dwells alone. Let me live in my house by the side of the road. It's here the race of men go by. They are good, they are bad, they are weak, they are strong. Wise, foolish, so am I. Then why should I sit in the corner seat or hurl the cynic's fan? Let me live in my house by the side of the road and be a friend to man. And this was Bill Curtis. He was a friend to man. Indeed he was. And a lovely person. It was a great privilege to visit with him. And you tell Dottie that she has the strength of all of the nightcappers and all of the people who share an empathy with the tragedy at the moment. But let's wish Bill bon voyage back to the Father's house. Yes, Shall we? I'm, I'm sure he's, uh, he's safe and secure. And, and, uh, this is very true. And happy this morning. And very happy, and he does live. Yes. Beyond the grave. We know that. He always will in our hearts, I'm sure. This is right. And this graduation day for Bill, as it will be for all of us someday, to a higher consciousness and a higher plane. Blessings be upon you and your family and your lovely wife. And this makes us a little stronger, you and I. Good night. Good night. Thank Good you, night. Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth Anderson in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Our Oklahoma line is now open for you. For a long time on the Nightcap program, we've made it a point to recommend certain services, products, and people to you, and uh, we've uh, prided ourselves on that uh, responsibility to you. That's why we're very pleased this morning to introduce Bill Johnson to you, General Manager of Menlove Dodge Toyota in Bountiful, the oldest Toyota dealer in the Intermountain West. And this is something I didn't know. Bill, how long have you been a Toyota dealer? Well, Herb, it's been since 1963, and we are the oldest uh, Toyota dealer in the Intermountain West. We have more 
Toyota's on the road than any other dealer in the area, and we're very, very proud of the service that we've been able to give them. I think that you'll find that uh, anyone coming here will be glad they did because we feel we can sell for less, and we do. Stop in today and see Men Love Dodge Toyota, the last of the little guys across from Slim Olson's in Bountiful. Our uh, next call this morning is here from uh, Nebraska or Colorado. Good morning. Good morning, Herb. Good morning. This is Nina Spitznick from Aurora, Colorado. Yes, Nina. Uh, I'd like to pay a tribute to Bill and say that his work is done and ours has just begun. We have uh, had just begun and let's all follow his example. And not car but criticize, but uh, use it to our best ability to be better night cats and get to work and see what we can accomplish. Now, Grandpa, you and I got something in common, haven't we? It finally happened, didn't it? Yes. And I heard Margaret Murphy, and I have so much to be thankful for for the nightcap and those wonderful darling people who go over and see my daughter. I just go oh, get so excited when I hear Margaret on Sunday night that I just sit and cry with joy. Well, we sure are happy to uh, uh, And, you know, now another thing. That little Abigail and our little Belinda is a month apart. That's right. That's right. And uh, uh, something else that uh, we have to face, regardless of whether we want to or not, every time their birthday comes around, we'll think of Bill. Yes, that's true. That's very true. Well, I went down to the nursing home this afternoon and took some flowers. I got my cards in, and uh, I wanted to know on this address now, will, will that be uh, sent in care of Dottie? Well, it should, uh, if someone were to send, uh, uh, and certainly, again, I, I'd like to hasten to uh, to mention that uh, uh, Dottie is not soliciting money. But, uh, uh, well, we this, know that. Yes, uh, I, I would want to make that clear, but if someone were to think of sending flowers, uh,
full-service grocery store that really takes the time and the effort to make sure that you're satisfied. That's kind of a rarity. Reams here in the Salt Lake area and in the Provo area were the very first to begin their discount policy. They know where to pass savings on to their customers. Miller Meats are known throughout this region, of course, to be finer. And Reams has the Miller Meat Company handpick every pound of meat to be sold in Reams stores. Only the top-grade meats are sold. And the more you shop at Reams, the more you can count the savings. Try a friendly store for all of your meat and grocery shopping today. Reams, six locations, two in Provo, one in with a huge western wear and sporting goods section in Taylorsville on Redwood Road, 2783 South State in Salt Lake City, 7300 South Ninth East in Midvale, and in Bountiful. If you're not shopping Reams, you're losing money. We move next to our Texas line here. And good morning. Hello. Hello there. Well, hello there, sir. Hi. Almost said Bill. Because he was on mo- Monday morning so many times. Yes. Uh, I want to send on behalf of Victory Number One condolences for Dottie and her family. And for I wonder. Are you going to publish the statistics about his birth date and time of death and so on and so forth in the work? Yes, we are. Uh, as a matter of fact, the uh, the February issue will be kind of a memorial issue to Bill. Uh, uh-huh. We're not going to... Uh, will you show the baby's picture? We you uh, say one to see that baby's picture? Uh, yes, we will. Probably not in February, however. Uh, uh, yeah, the February... The uh, the inside of the February work is, yes. is all set, and uh, uh, it, as a matter of fact, it's at the printer, but uh, we plan to, uh, we check with Dottie today, that with her permission, we're going to put Bill's picture on the cover of the uh, uh, February wick, mm-hmm. and uh, that's uh, uh, easy to do as, uh, technically, so... Uh, you know, it's quite a singular thing. Yeah. Bill's picture appeared in the first issue of the enlarged wick. When you enlarge the eight more pages, right? And I've had that out here ever since I heard the news. Well, we'll, uh, we'll certainly give you more background on Bill. I uh, I know that the the sketch that we put in here several months back was certainly not uh, not adequate. Bill was uh, 54 when he when he died. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh, I believe his uh, his birth year, and I'm sorry I don't have the exact date, but the birth year well, was I can figure it out. 1916. Uh-huh. 16. Uh, I believe it was 16. Okay. Uh-huh. And, uh, uh, he what got, was the time of his death at the office? It was approximately 1 o'clock uh, on Friday afternoon. Mountain after- time. Mountain time on Friday afternoon. Well, it was, uh, he was in- resting. Oh, yes. Uh, he, he was very tired. He died without any pain, uh, the doctors tell us. It was an instantaneous... Uh, was it in the heart area or coronary thrombosis? It was coronary thrombosis. Yes. My brother passed away that way, and my father... It was through my father's death that I first tuned in on your program, February the 23rd. Is that right? That night I couldn't sleep after he died. And I was spinning the dial, and I picked up your beautiful voice. And I've listened ever since. And it was a great comfort to me in those first few weeks. This was just last year then? No, in 68. Oh, I've been see. listening three years, I see. almost. Uh-huh. And, uh, and this is who? This is Josephine Kegemaster. Oh, yes, Josephine. In yes. Dallas. Uh-huh. I talked to you uh, Christmas. Of course. For just a minute, a second, I guess. Uh-huh. And uh, I talked to Bill last on December 19th, and uh, I had a bunch of notes here, and I'm afraid I just kind of backed him off the map. He was a swell listener. Oh, he was indeed. He was a great guy. Yes. And, you know, uh, I had a minister that I saw a great deal of, my husband and I did. And uh, at the close of each sermon, her uh, statement, I think it exemplifies Bill, and even though I have never met him, and I'd like to give it to you. All right. Just a couple of lines. Sure. Live each day as though it was your last day on earth, and treat your fellow man as though it was 
his last day also. And I think Bill exemplifies that. Yes, that's so very true, isn't it? Yeah. We just uh, we just never know from day to day, and uh, no, we don't. I think this is a good example of uh, of what you say. You know, we just can't be kind enough to each other because uh, we just may not be there to say I'm sorry to the next day. That's right. So. And uh, I wonder now, uh, can we send in for subscriptions to the Wick in memory of Bill? Oh, certainly. Have you thought of that? And, certainly. Uh, uh, well, some of them wanted to send flowers, and I said, no, man. I said, that's not the thing to do. Bill, uh, Bill talked. I think that subscriptions to the WIC, uh, to a dear friend somewhere, would be the most wonderful thing, because he really plugged the WIC, and he thought a lot of it. Yes, he did. He believed in it. He believed in it, as I do. What, what should we do? Just send in the hoods, too, and then say in, in memoriam to Bill Curtis, or what? Would you, uh, Josephine, and uh, in, in coming issues of the WIC, uh, we'd like to uh, uh, publish a little roster, I, I think, of people that, that have done this in Bill's name. Uh, well, just, now, that's very thoughtful. Just as a tribute to, to Bill, because uh, I don't want him to be forgotten. He was a... He was a humanitarian, and he believed in the and the principles of the program and, and what the program stands for far more than you might imagine. Uh, he, he didn't talk a great deal. Uh, as you say, he was a good listener. Great but, listener. But he had a, a big heart, and he was uh, uh, he cared for other people, and uh, he wept for them, and he was deeply concerned. Uh, we, uh -huh. t we talked many, many times uh, about situations that occurred on the program, and, and he was always concerned about uh, the well-being of everyone. Mm -hmm. So uh, your thought is certainly well taken. Well, uh, I, I uh, urge the uh, big B number one to do that, and I'm going to send in uh, for a subscription to a friend of mine in Michigan. And I wanted to tell you, probably the next time I call in, I'll be traveling from Florida. Here's a special message of security for those who frequently travel or stay home alone. Now you can enjoy the peace of mind that comes with knowing that you are safe and secure from thieves and intruders. It's now possible with the new Star Sentry Lifeguard Lock, the maximum security lock tested and proven to withstand pressures of more than 1,200 pounds per square inch. Now that's even more force than your front door could withstand. The Star Sentry Lock can easily be installed and is so handy and compact that you can carry this lock in your purse or bag when traveling. Take it with you whenever and wherever you might go. The Nightcaps can now have this Star Sentry Lock for only two seventy-five dollars each. And of course, it's a good idea to order several locks. Your check or money order should be sent to Locks, L-O-C-K-S, Locks, Post Office Box 60, Salt Lake City, Utah, and the price again only two seventy five mailed to you. Our next call on the uh, Eastern Line here. Good morning. Eastern Line. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Hello, Hello. This is the first time I've talked to you. This is Arlene Hefner at Texarkana, Arkansas. Arlene Hefner. H-E-F-N-E-L. Yes, honey. Oh, you turn off my television and the radio. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you better now. Good. Um, well, my picture sign I got in the paper there on page 23. <laughs> this month? I'm holding my uh, guitar and the accordion sitting there. Well, you find you remember you that one. Page 23. Well, anyway, I had two uh, letters because of the picture people around here that somebody oh. in New Boston, uh, Vera Rackley in New Boston, uh -huh. called me and a, and a lady from here whose mother lives here. I don't have her name yet, but I'm going to find out who it is. So it kind of helps you to get acquainted around, doesn't it? You bet it does. So it's a lot of purposes, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Yes, sir. You're right on page 23 of this month's uh, January WIC. That's right. Right there in the second column. Uh, 
I've been a member since September, and I had talked to Bill once, and I sure did enjoy talking to him. I I know we're all going to miss him. So we just have to go on, you know. Yes. And uh, how can we cheer you up? By more telephone calls? Oh, well, yes. The busier I think I am, the better it'll be for me. I think so, but everybody's that way. Well, we've had quite a little excitement while I was sitting here about 15 minutes ago. I heard the fire department coming and go around the street to uh, the street east of me. And I looked out the window and the smoke was just coming over here. It just looked like fog out there. You have a fire? So I think they've got it under control now, but I smell smoke. And so a house or something got on fire over there. Oh. This is kind of a bad, bad time of the morning for that to happen, isn't it? That's right. And then uh, we've had this kind of uh, black eye in, San- in Texarkana with this airplane falling and killing those four people. Oh, in yes. Texarkana. Wasn't that terrible? I know them, but it kind of brings it close to home. I should say. Something going on all the time. Well, I do enjoy the week. Well, I'm certainly glad. I appreciate your support. And uh, I enjoy uh, the program. I most always turn it on about 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh-huh. Does it come in pretty well out there? Well, most of the time it does. Once in a while it fades out a little bit. It uh-huh. seems like the line's a little noisy tonight. Yes, it does. This does is... it seem noisy? Do you hear me well? Oh, yes, you're coming through, but it is uh, a little noisier than the other ones. Uh-huh. Just it sounds to... a little far away to me. Just something in the line there. You're coming in fine, but it's uh, just uh-huh. a little staticky there. Well, you keep up your courage, Herb. I know you've got a hard job there. Yeah. Somebody to fill Bill shoes is a pretty big job. Yes, yes, it will be. Sure is. Well, I think I'll send her a little check. I don't have much myself, but anyway, I like to share. Well. And let's see, I, I send that to you, uh, to you or to Justin Stewart? Yeah, no, to Mr. Stewart, if you will, uh, Justin Stewart? hmm Attorney? Attorney. Salt Lake City, will that get it? Well, uh, it should be to the New House Building. That's his office. Uh, New House Building? Right, New House Building. Uh Uh-huh. And uh, he will get it, and and certainly anything is is much appreciated. But again, we we want to stress, certainly we're not soliciting for for funds for it. It's just those that would want to send something like uh, Yeah. Well, what will the zip be? Uh, The zip is 84110. It's the same zip as uh, our box number. Eight four one one zero. It's uh, the downtown zip code is uh, is all the same. Who's saying that? Huh? Yes, the same as ours. Eight four one one zero. I don't find that. I don't know. You said eight four one one zero. Right. Yeah. Well. Well, courage. <laughs> Thank courage you. Courage to you. Thank you very much. And we'll be thinking of you. Okay. It's hard on everybody out there. And you'll call us again, I hope. All right. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Arlene. Bye bye. Arlene Hefner in Texarkana, Arkansas, and Arlene's picture is on page 23 of this uh, January issue of the Wick magazine. I guess if we were to count the many different uh, cleaning agents on the shelves of our grocery stores, we'd find uh, hundreds, literally hundreds today, and you're probably somewhat perplexed as to which one to select. I'd like to recommend that you select the one that does it all, Basic H, and you need only one, of course, Basic H, the concentrated liquid organic household cleaner to do all of your house cleaning. Well, well, it's non-toxic, non-irritating, non-magnetic, non-volatable, and biodegradable. It doesn't hinder bacterial action of septic tanks and cesspools. It cleans dishes, pots, pans, floors, ceilings, automobiles, dishwashers, bathroom, hands, baby things, walls, mirrors, glass, windows, almost everything. Basic H, you need only one. Basic H. Remember, one quart of Basic H makes 64 gallons of cleaning solution by simply following the instructions. Biodegradable, organic Basic H. Write to Box 60 today and let me tell you more about where you can get Basic H in your neighborhood. From a nightcap, and there are many nightcaps that uh, serve you with uh, Basic H, Basic D, Basic I, Basic R, Basic L, all the many household cleaning conveniences for your home. We're uh, approaching news time, and we'll get back into as many more calls as we can take this morning. Again, uh, Bill's funeral will be this morning at 11.30 at the Neil O'Donnell 
mortuary here in Salt Lake City at 372 East 1st South, and certainly all of you are invited to attend. How many of you listening right now have uh, thought at one time or another of ordering the Wick magazine and you've just kind of put it off? You're putting off uh, enjoying a great magazine. We're very proud of it because the articles and the features and the pictures and the stories that appear every month in the Wick magazine are submitted to us by our listeners, and therefore it uh, has a great deal of, of enjoyment and entertainment. We have things from the Crusher's Kitchen, things that you will enjoy fixing in your kitchen, our pen pal list, uh, information about our tours and our, our traveling, uh, letters from the mailbag. Uh, we have, of course, uh, greetings this month in the December issue uh, from the Nightcaps. We have uh, Christmas meditations. Uh, we have uh, the Divided Stranger, one of our feature stories by Elizabeth Foster, The Golden Lilac Tree. But one Nightcap does while she listens to the program. Many, many more in the Wick magazine. It's only $5 a year. You write to Wick, Post Office Box 60, Salt Lake City, Utah. One o'clock in the Mountain West. We pause here briefly for station identification now. This is the Nightcap Radio Network. And this is KSL, Salt Lake City. Would you like to have a friendly visitor? Are you the person, or do you know of someone who needs friendship, thoughtful attention, someone who's personally interested? Then you need one of the trained, friendly visitors. They're looking for the senior citizen who is homebound with little or no family to visit them, who would like to have a friend in for a visit, or take walks, or read things of interest, or just chat. There are many dedicated volunteers who want to give a few hours a week to help you. The friendly visitors are carefully screened. They complete a workshop. They're knowledgeable of the many services available for senior citizens, and they're able to make suggestions for new outside activities. If you'd like to have a friendly visitor, call 484-4821. This program is sponsored by the Metropolitan Salt Lake Services for the Aging, 156 Westminster Avenue. Phone 484-4821. Would you like to have a friendly visitor? Call 484-4821. Now. And a good good morning to you. This is Herb Jepko now in our Nightcap Network newsroom with our on-the-hour report of late news brought to you by Equitable Life and Casualty Insurance Company of Salt Lake City. And now the news. In the news this morning, two ships have collided off the southeast coast of England, resulting in heavy loss of life. One of the vessels, the 13,000-ton Panamanian tanker Texas Caribbean, exploded. Lifeboats uh, are now on the scene where the hulk of the Texas Caribbean is sinking. Coastal radio reports say 21 men have been picked up by ships in the area, and at least 10 of the Texaco Caribbean's crew are now reported missing. Route 1 is reportedly the only road link still open to the Cambodian capital of Phnom Penh this morning. Allied military sources say some 2,000 South Vietnamese troops of ranger and cavalry units have now moved into Cambodia to challenge the communists for control of Route 1. And the uh, president of Uruguay has asked his Congress to suspend constitutional rights for a 90-day period to bolster a massive search for three kidnapped foreigners. The leftist guerrillas say all detained foreign officials are in perfect health. One U.S. soldier has been injured and numerous windows broken at the U.S. military chemical area in Okinawa as a result of an attack by Okinawan demonstrators. The demonstrators were protesting American plans for the removal of poison gas from the island. And Israeli political sources say the mediator Gunnar Jarring has flown back to the United Nations carrying detailed new proposals from Israel for a Mideast peace settlement. Upon arriving in New York's John F. Kennedy Airport, Yaring would only comment, we have very interesting and useful talks. The Army said it will, be, it will now be several weeks before a new decision is reached as to whether Captain Ernest Medina will stand court-martial for the alleged My Lai massacre. A second hearing for Medina at Fort McPherson, Georgia, ended in an unusual Sunday session with no decision. Medina was commander of the company, which is alleged to have wiped out the Vietnamese hamlet. The ousted legal services director of the Office of Economic Opportunity said Sunday that uh, he sees an attempt on the part of the Nixon administration to break up the anti-poverty agency. Terry Lenzer 
said the breakup would result from transferring key programs to other departments. The Lux administration is expected to announce today a cut in business taxes, although the government is facing a budget deficit that may top $15 billion this fiscal year. The measure apparently is aimed to stimulate the economy and combat rising unemployment with deficits in the federal budget. The extended Christmas vacation has ended for some 73,000 Pittsburgh school children, striking teachers voted at Sunday to accept a $900 a year pay increase from the city school board and in their work out exactly a week after it began. A team of California astronomers reports the discovery of two massive galaxies in the Earth's galactic neighborhood, only three million light years away. The find was reported in the Astrophysical Journal by nine astronomers who say the new galaxies have been overlooked for thousands of years because they were almost completely obscured by interstellar dust. In a moment, we'll look at uh, weather in the news right after this now from Equitable. Nightcaps, do you know that accidents and cancer are two of the leading causes of disability and death? That's right, Nightcaps. According to the American Cancer Society, cancer will strike one of every four Americans in two of every three families at every age and in any group. Cancer treatment is often best provided by hospitals away from home. Treatment is usually prolonged and very costly. Cancer cures are possible in many cases, but they usually require expensive treatment. That's why one of our major Nightcap Network sponsors, Equitable Life and Casualty Insurance Company of Salt Lake City, Utah, is now made available to our Nightcap audience who have never had cancer, a new accident cancer plan that is guaranteed renewable for your lifetime and pays over $10,000 in specified cancer and accident benefits. Now, the Nightcap Cancer Care Plan pays in addition to Medicare or any other insurance you may carry. And it's good anywhere in the world. And at an unbelievable low cost of less than 10 cents per day for families, regardless of size, and less than 8 cents per day for nightcaps over the age of 60. At the full details, send me your name, age, and address to Nightcap Cancer Care. Nightcap Cancer Care, Box 60, Salt Lake City, Utah. And number two, there is no obligation on your part at all. I'll personally see that you get all the details by return mail. So do that this morning. That's Nightcap Cancer Care, Box 60, Salt Lake City, Utah. Looking at weather this morning for the uh, Tulsa area, generally fair through Monday through today, turning partly cloudy and a little cooler on Tuesday with winds light and variable this morning. Lows in the uh, upper 20s and highs today in the mid-50s. Our local forecast calls for rain and snow, decreasing to a few showers by later this morning. Occasional rain and snow increasing again by this afternoon or night, becoming snow by Tuesday. Our lows expected this morning near 30, highs today between 40 and 45, and Tuesday in the upper 30s. The probability of rain or snow about 30% today, increasing by nightfall to around 50%. Currently downtown, the sky is cloudy. Our temperature stands now at 40 degrees. You've been listening to five minutes of late news brought to you by Equitable Life and Casualty Insurance Company of Salt Lake City. Our next on the hour report of late news coming up one hour from now this morning here on the Nightcap Radio Network. We're brought to you by Equitable Life and Casualty Insurance Company of Salt Lake City. We have one available line at the present time, the Canadian line, and uh, that's our next stop here if it's ringing right after we run through the phone numbers quickly for you. The uh, Canadian line is open. Again, a reminder that uh, uh, Bill Curtis's funeral will be today, for those of you just tuning in, at 11.30 this morning at the Neil O'Donnell Mortuary. That address is 372 East on 1st South here in Salt Lake City, and uh, uh, on behalf of the uh, 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 Dottie Curtis and the entire family why they've asked me to extend a, a very cordial welcome to all of you wishing to to attend and, and certainly on behalf of all of us at the NIA we, we hope that uh, if it's convenient for you, you will at 11.30 this morning at the Neil O'Donnell Mortuary 372 East on 1st South we have 8 minutes now past 1 moving into our uh, third hour this morning we have some phone numbers quickly for you 
All right, if you're ready to uh, make note of the phone numbers, we'll recite those to you quickly. First of all, let's start with our Utah line. And this is our new Utah number this morning. The uh, number is 524-2667. 524-2667 for Utah. If you're calling from Idaho, Nevada, Montana, or Wyoming, the phone number is 524-2640. 524-2640. And, of course, the area code is 801 on all the rest of our out-of-state numbers. For Northern California, 524-2610. 524-2610 for Northern California. Southern California, 524-2523. 524-2523, Southern California. If you're calling from the state of Oklahoma, the number is 524-2696, 524-2696 from Oklahoma. From the great Pacific Northwest, Oregon or Washington, the number would be 524-2611, 524-2611, Oregon, Washington. From the states of Nebraska or Colorado, the phone number is 524-2510, 524 one zero from Colorado, Nebraska. From the states of Arizona or New Mexico, the number is 524-2641. 524-2641 for Arizona or New Mexico. If you're calling from Texas, the number 524-2693. 524-2693 from Texas. If you're calling from Canada, anywhere in Canada, if you're a trucker en route this morning, if you're out on the highway driving, uh, the phone number to call from Canada, or if you're a trucker en route this morning and over the rotor, the phone number would be 524-2668, 524-2668. And from uh, all of the other states that we have not mentioned, those in the Far East, the Midwest, uh, way out there this morning, the number is 524-2695, 524 Nine five, And remember, the area code is 801. If you're dialing direct, if you'll dial the numeral 1, then area code 801, and then the number that pertains to your area. We'll get to you as quickly as we can. If it's ringing, please let it ring. We'll get to you as fast as we can. Okay. Our uh, next call this morning in hour number 3 at 11 minutes now past 1. It's 40 degrees downtown. This call is from Canada. And good morning. Hello, Hope. This uh, is Dottie. Hi, Dottie. Hi. Help me a little bit. Sure, I'm. I'm. Uh, so you're up late, huh? <laughs> I just want to tell everyone how much comfort these people are giving me tonight. My heart is broken, but it can't stay that way with the wonderful. Most wonderful people in the whole world by my side. They're great, aren't they? I have never in my life been through anything like this. I didn't know that people from all over the United States, all over the world, just make me feel as warm and not alone as much as they are doing to me and my family. My girls are here, my son-in-laws are here, and my son is here, and of course the baby's in bed. At this time, with my heart like it is, I would just love to have every person
about knowing you and Pat for the many, many years that we have. We have loved you, as you know, and as I've told you many times. We're proud that someone in this radio and TV media can bring as much love and good and help to so many people. God bless all of you. I feel your prayers. I feel your hands on mine. I feel your arms on my shoulders. Thank you is a very, very small world, word, but it is meant with all my love, and God bless every one of you. We'll see you this morning, dear. Thank you. Love you. Love you. <laughs> Bye-bye now. Bye. Dottie Curtis, this morning. And uh, we'll get to uh, another call here in just a moment. Nightcap Sam's Photo Lab in Salt Lake has a great photo special for this month of January. Any 12 exposure roll of Kodakolor or Gap Color Print Film, 225 developed and printed. Now that's any 12 exposure roll of Kodakolor or Gap Color Print Film, just 225 developed and printed. Plus, Sam is fast, and all orders are processed the day received and back in the mail that same night. Remember that Sam's Photo Lab, Box 1115, Box 1115, Department S. Salt Lake City, and the zip code is 84110. Our uh, next call here on the Utah line this morning. Good morning. Good morning, son. Hello there. Uh... Esther Clapperson from Rosedale, Alberta. Yes, how are you, Esther? Jane Patton's friend, Nancy. Yes. Um, I'd like you to know that old Jean is on the go again. She, you remember she was in the hospital for yeah. nearly a year? Yes. Well, now she's walking with, still with her brace, but without a cane. Wonderful. Her husband and she went downtown the other day for lunch and then did the shops before going home. <laughs> And they had a new year and all, and it was lovely. Now, it was lovely to hear Louise Harvey come in the other night. We had wondered so much just uh, what had happened to her and how she was. But it was lovely to hear Mrs. Curtis just now. I can see now why Bill was such a fine man. Yes. It could take only a woman behind a man to make a man great. I believe that's true. And this is a really wonderful woman. I'd wondered, and I couldn't get in the first night. Have you heard the story of the ship on the ocean? The men and women were standing on the shore, and they saw something come up on the horizon. And they said, I think it's a ship. And sure enough, it came along came along and passed by in full sail. And they said, here's coming the ship. Yes, it's coming. They looked at it, and it went. And they kept watching as it went down over the other horizon. And they said, there goes the ship. But on another shore, somebody was saying, here comes a ship. I let the rest of them come in now. Good night, and God bless you all. Good night, dear. Thank you. Esther Clapperson this morning in Rosedale, Alberta. Our Canadian line is open, and that is very good, isn't it? Bill has arrived on that other shore, and uh, I'm sure he's looking down, smiling this morning, and grateful for your concern over his family and, and with the kind of warm feeling that I know you have for 
him and for his family and the things he believed in. And uh, so we're, we're moving to uh, another call. The Canadian line is open. This one is uh, Southern California here. Good morning. Good morning, Carl. Good morning, Carl. How are you doing? Fine, and you? Well, real fine. Uh, may I say that I uh, did not have the pleasure, I think, uh, near as much of knowing Bill as I have you and uh, so many of the others that have handled the program, but I think I, I knew Bill fairly well. I think you can tell an awful lot by a voice if you listen close. I think a voice tells you uh, much about a person. And to Dottie, uh, bless her heart, uh, the first, oh, let's say, three or four verses in the 14th chapter of St. John, I think means so much. Uh, it said, let not your heart be troubled, and you believe in God, so you won't And I thought it was off, and you didn't mention, if it were not so, I would have told you so. I go to prepare a place for you. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. And I think we know where Bill is at this time. And, uh, Herb, I hate to bring up a, a little bit of a sore spot. Uh, uh, this program is so wonderful and like this. But I've heard a, man, a gentleman mentioned tonight who uh, is just the opposite of what Bill was. Uh, I hate to say this. I hate to uh, criticize anybody. But, uh, again, I think you could tell an awful lot by a man's voice. And uh, uh, God has a way of revealing a person for what they are. Now, this gentleman called in to you, I think, last Thursday night or Friday morning, uh, supposedly from North Vancouver, British Columbia. And yet he called in Thursday night and also Friday night uh, on a local uh, program here in Ventura County uh, from Santa Paula, California. So he's quite a miracle man, too, to be in Santa Paula, California one night uh, and within about two hours later be in North Vancouver, but and the next night be right back in Santa Paula, California. So uh, I would suggest, as many have, that he turn this dial if he does not like the program because... Uh, it's a truly wonderful, wonderful program. It's a godsend for many people. And uh, uh, I just hate to see one guy get on here and, and raise uh, havoc. Uh, we know him for what he is. Uh, as I say, God will reveal a liar and a cheat. And uh, I'm afraid this is all he is. And uh, with that, uh, with uh, I'll just say good night to you and the God bless body and the family. And uh, the ones of us that cannot, it is absolutely impossible for us to be there today. Uh, we can be there in prayer. And uh, I think this is important, too. You bet it is. Okay. Okay, Carl. Okay. Bye Good night. Good night. Carl uh, Tudor this morning in uh, Ventura, California. Our uh, Southern California line is now open for you. And gentlemen, Herb Jepko brings into your home right now a time for meditation. Hi, I'm Galen Rowan here at KSR Radio, and I've just had the warm pleasure of auditioning Herb's new album, A Time for Meditation. That's the title, with original music, as Herb shares with you the wisdom and thoughts of some of the world's great minds, philosophers, patriots, statesmen, authors, poets, and prophets, all contributing to the endless search for a deeper insight and understanding into life. This new record album, A Time for Meditation, is truly a high-quality collector's item and will bring endless hours of enjoyment to each and every one of you nightcaps. This original album is available right now for just $5 by writing to A Time for Meditation, Box 60, Salt Lake City, Utah. Our next uh, call this morning from Idaho, Nevada, Montana, Wyoming. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Well, good morning, Herb. Uh, first off, I'd like to extend my deepest sympathy to Mrs. Curtis and her family. And uh, next, I want to tell you that we're going with you to um, New Zealand. Oh, wonderful. And Australia and so forth. Wonderful. Who's this? Uh... Well, I'm Tini Noggle from Casper, Wyoming. Uh, uh, Tina, is it? Uh, Tidi, T-E-E-D-Y. Oh, Tidi. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, that's not usual name. A silly nickname, yes. Uh-huh. Um, 
Are you going to be able to go still? Tee, I don't know. I, I'm, everything has happened so fast here. I, of course it I, has. I just don't know what's uh, going to happen now. Oh, uh, uh, well, I know. I know what the, just kind the of, dilemma uh, you're in. Yeah. You know, it's a... Uh, uh, I haven't even uh, been able to look after my, you know, my personal things at home. Of course uh, not. Such a... We'll, we'll know in a few days. I, I thought maybe over the weekend we'd get back to normal, but it's uh, we're yeah. far from that. So yeah. uh, uh, perhaps today we'll find some some sort of uh, balance road here. I, I don't know. Well, but uh, whether we go or not, I, I'm hopeful that you will. I know you will just enjoy yourself so much. Uh, uh, it's going to be one of the most fantastic trips. I, if we don't get to make it, our yeah. hearts will certainly be with you. We have been looking forward to it for some hours, oh, yes. especially uh, being with you and Pat. And uh, it will be disappointing if you can't be there, but I'm certain to understand. If you can't. Well, uh, again, I just really don't know at the moment. I, I can't say we won't because we're going to certainly try still. I, I don't know that we can, but uh, uh, if we're not, I'm... I'm sure you'll understand why. Yes. Uh, I, uh, I just know you're going to, again, have the greatest time in the world because the trip is planned just meticulously all the way through. Right. And uh, uh, the inclusions of Hawaii and uh, and all yeah. of the, the many wonderful places that have been arranged for a stopover uh, during the trip, uh, it's a chance of a lifetime, really. And I. Uh, well, that's what we thought. Oh, yes. Um, we haven't gotten our passports back. Um should we have? Do you suppose I uh, Perhaps not, T.D. Again, he's using these to, uh, to secure your visas, and uh, uh, I wouldn't really uh, be concerned about it until perhaps the end of the week. Uh, I'm sure you'll have them by the end of the week. Well, we're leaving on Friday. On Friday. We have several days in San Francisco. Oh, I see. Well, in, in the event that they are not sent to you, then, of course, Paul will, will meet you uh, uh, with them, he'll have them with him. Should he not send them to you, so uh, just uh, really don't uh, don't worry at all, because he's a, uh, a very meticulous person. He, he follows everything down to the finest detail. So is this Paul the boy? Uh, Paul the boy. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, he'll be with you every step of the way, and uh, uh, you won't have to worry about a thing. He's uh, he's a fine man and has many many years in the in the field of travel. So uh, uh, your heart's content, I'm sure, will. Uh, you'll find on this trip. I'm sure of that. And is the, uh, uh, the tour filled with... No, we have two uh, two spaces open. Two Katie. spaces left. Yeah, really? there was a lady in, uh, I believe in Texas, that uh, um, her, her, uh, either her daughter or her mother, I'm not sure, here uh, just a few days back, also suffered a heart attack. Oh, and uh, so she's going to be unable to uh, to make it. She and, uh, and her daughter plan to go, but uh, this, of course, precludes that. So uh, there are two two spaces open on the trip. Uh-huh. Well, it's going to be so interesting meeting yeah. all these new people. And... We're going to be talking. Uh, should we not get to go? Of course, our plan is to uh, uh, from over there is to call the program uh, from overseas, whether it be in. Hawaii or Australia, oh, really? New Zealand, uh-huh, and and tell everybody you know what we're doing and have oh. everybody say hello. But should we not uh, be privileged to, to to be with you, then of course we're going to contact you over there. So we'll be we'll be talking with you on the on the trip one way or the other. I see. All right, do so much that you can be with us. Oh, I do too. But uh, especially now, it uh, <laughs> would yeah. kind of uh, take some of the burden off to be uh, to be with you again. Absolutely. Come on.
Well, we, we have rather cold weather in some parts of the country. For instance, in Lewistown, Montana right now, the low spot in the, in the nation as far as weather is concerned, it's down to 23 degrees below zero. And uh, rather warm in Salt Lake City with a temperature reading of 40 degrees. Our high today should be uh, somewhere uh, between 40 and 45. And uh, in Tulsa today, it should be somewhere in the mid-50s, about 10 degrees warmer. You sometimes get a little perplexed when it comes to cleaning problems, wondering what to use in your home to really do a good job without taking so much time and without costing so much money. You can go through a lot of cleaning agents very quickly and spend a great deal of money. Basic H is the concentrated liquid organic household cleaner that really does the job for you in every way. And you need only one. Basic H does so much. Cleaning of hands, dishes, floors, windows, mirrors, windshields, all glass. As a matter of fact, you can wash your fruits and vegetables, woolen, silkens, nylons, all fabrics for general cleaning, for automobiles, whatever it is. Basic H is a highly concentrated cleaner. So we hope you'll try it today. It's non-irritating, non-toxic, biodegradable, organic, 100% safe for all cleaning. And no offensive odors either. Write to Box 60 today for information on where you can get Basic H in your neighborhood from a nightcap. Basic H, Box 60, Salt Lake City. We're at 29 minutes now past the hour of 1, and we pause briefly here for station identification, and we'll return with our next call. This is the Nightcap Radio Network. And this is KSL, Salt Lake City. So many of you have asked uh, about the material we read periodically on the program, how you might uh, get copies. We're reading from American Essays by Dan Valentine. And each copy, five separate volumes, priced at only $1.50 each. When ordering by number, please mention whether you want volume number one, two, three, four, or five, or all five volumes for only $7.50. American Essays by the noted columnist Dan Valentine, dealing with the human emotions of life, sentimental word portraits to live by. What is a grandmother? What is a father? What is an Irishman? What is a truck driver? And many, many more in all five volumes of American Essays. Please order by number. Stress which number that you want. Number one, two, three, four, or five. A dollar fifty cents each to Box 60, Salt Lake City. American Essays. And we uh, move to our next call this morning. Uh, this one is from Oregon or Washington here. And good morning. Good morning. Hello there. Hi, how are you? Uh, fine, and you? Oh, fine. And this is who? Luann Lillisco from Gate Harbor, Washington. Luann Lillisco. Yeah. Yes, Luann. Yeah. I thought I'd just call uh, call out. I was trying to call you last. This is a Friday night. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm getting hold of you. Yeah, we talked to your dad last week, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm really sorry to hear about Bill. Yes, we are, too. Um, oh, when I found out, I really, I started crying and everything. It's quite a shock to me. Well, it, uh, it was low end for all of us. Very unexpected. Yeah. Well, I think I'll let my dad talk to you now. Okay, dear. Thanks for calling. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, Herb. Yes, Joel. Yeah, how are you doing? Oh, pretty good under the circumstances. Oh, yeah. Keep it up. expect something like this if you have a, uh, a history of this sort of thing, but where there's been no illness and no uh, no reason to suspect anything, why uh, it comes as quite a shock to you. That, that's the thing that it, it's so funny now, like myself, you know, I've had six of them in, in the course of the uh, more or less expected in my case, but uh, no, in his case, I, uh, and they used to say, you know, that it's uh, always in heavy people, you know, of course, he was a slim, slender bill, as I understood. Uh, his picture, of course, uh, was just on the, on the face, but... Uh, yeah, he 
was a thin man. Yeah, that's what I understood. Yes. Very likable man, I'll tell you that. Uh, but, uh... And oftentimes when you worry a lot or you have a lot of uh, uh, concern, this, this sometimes affects your heart, too. You know? Oh, yes, yes, I know. That, uh, that is what that's the past now. I'm just talking out of worry. Of course, the time I never was. I was born in Canada four times, and, and uh, it hit it off the heart and all that. Well, it really did. It didn't seem to. It was always jovial and... Uh, and yeah. And, and uh, he didn't uh, seemingly... Uh, well, his uh, daddy's, uh, of course, is confirmed as he didn't really... Uh, very easy going, didn't have a lot of uh, worries. I'm, I'm sure that he had... Uh, everybody has worries, you know, and concern, but... Uh, uh, he was just an easygoing, likable person, you know. He seemed to be, he seemed to be like he uh, th- uh, took things kind of uh, very easy, like although yes. a lot of people uh, probably uh, uh, kind of keep it in, you know, and, and that's worth yet, I guess. Yes, it is. Uh, I know I found that with myself, but uh, you take care of yourself, Herb, and. and uh, yourself out too much. No, no. You know, and, and say, uh, I, I would like to know if I could get the box number of that uh, North Vietnamese Peace Delegation. You know, you had that man on. Remember the uh, post office box number? I can get it for you here real fast. Joe. All right. I have it handy here this morning. It's uh, North Vietnamese uh, peace delegation, care of POW, uh-huh. Provo, Utah. Or oh, just just uh, care of Provo and no box number. No box number. Oh, oh. Zip, zip would be important here, I think, probably, Joel. It's 84601. Yeah, I have that, but I, I didn't get the box number, and I was wondering, but it's just the care of post office box, uh, Provo, Utah, then. Well, just care of POW, which is uh, prisoners of war. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, that's the, yeah. Well, I'll I'll word it a little different than yeah. See, they have that arranged with the uh, the postal people, and they're they're alerted to that. So in, in Provo. In Provo. Uh-huh. Yes. Well, that 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 that's the way I'll word it. Yeah. So that yeah. So that uh, uh, I didn't. I thought there was a box number that you no. sent to. Okay, that's fine then. And, and, uh, they tried to simplify this as much as they could for people, so they could easily remember it. I think. Well, sure. Yeah. Well, that's that's good. That. Uh, yeah, my daughter says that she gives, sends her love to you and, and uh, best regards to all your family. Thank you, Joe. And uh, I've been trying to get through to Merle Jones in, in New Mexico, and her <laughs> her uh, line is cuckoo when I dial it. I don't know why. I heard her call in the other night, but yeah. something went wrong. I don't know. Well, you keep trying. That's what I've been doing. Okay, Joe. Well, you take care. You betcha. Uh, Herb, real good care. Please. Will do. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. Joe Lilliscove in Gig Harbor, Washington this morning. The Oregon-Washington line open, and this is Northern California. And I, th- I think that uh, every one of them, it, it comes through uh, in their voices when, uh, when they are such wonderful people. And you have a lot of people behind you, dear. Don't ever forget that. I, I feel all of you out there, too, and that's why it's possible for me to, to be here. Well, you just know that our prayers are with you. Even, uh, even if we can't get on, I couldn't get on Friday night. I talked to Bill on Monday, and um, so I didn't, I didn't try to call. But you knew that I was thinking of you just the same, didn't you? Of course I did. Well, uh, uh, darling, you'll be uh, hearing from us. I hope so. And uh, I'm going to d- do a little bit of something instead of flowers. So I was so grateful to get the address. And, uh, uh, darling, I'm going to write a letter as soon as I, uh, I can. I haven't felt very well the last uh, week or so much time. Take care of yourself now. Oh, I, I'm so wondering, you know, it can't keep me down long. <laughs> Be up and flying around again. All right, dear. And uh, get dotting right out. I surely will. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Good night. 
Vera Stewart in Pacific Grove, California. The Northern California line is open. Again, if you're just joining us this morning, I'd like to uh, bring to your attention uh, uh, Bill Bill's funeral. Bill Curtis's funeral will be this morning at 11:30 uh, at the Neil O'Donnell Mortuary at 372 East on First South, and uh, uh, Dottie and and Bill's family have uh, requested that I announce certainly, and I'm very pleased to that uh, all of you are invited, and uh, we hope you'll you'll come and uh, pay your last respects to Bill. Today at uh, 11.30 at the Neil O'Donnell Mortuary, 372 East on 1st South. Uh, any, in lieu of flowers, any contributions to uh, the Curtis family should be sent to uh, Dottie Curtis in care of Justin Stewart. Justin Stewart. The New House Building, Salt Lake City, Utah. Justin Stewart, the New House Building, Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, Justin is the attorney for the NIA, and he will look after your very kind contributions, should you choose to make any. Our next call this morning is here from Arizona or New Mexico. Good morning. Did I get on the wrong line? Probably we have an overload on the on the 40 number, so it flipped over here to 41. This happens periodically, so uh, uh, don't be concerned. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Who's this? This is Helen. Yes, Helen. I've called a few times. Right. <laughs> And Bill did kind of like my husband and I did. There's 17 years between our last two boys. And uh, my heart really goes out to my bless your heart. Bill was the same age as my husband. Every time I hear the fire siren, my heart just stops. But you know, it just proves one thing. It can happen any time, any place. Indeed it can, Helen. May I read you something? I won't keep the line long, but I have something here that is uh, very apropos, I think. Truly. People liked him, not because he was rich or known to fame. He had never won applause as a star in any game. His was not a brilliant style. His way was not a forceful way, but he had a gentle smile and a kindly word to say. Never envious or proud, on he went with manner mild, never quarrelsome or loud, just as simple as a child. Honest, patient, brave, and true. Thus he lived from day to day, doing what he found to do, in a cheerful sort of way. Wasn't one to boast of gold, or belittle it with sneers, didn't change from hot to cold, and kept his friends throughout the years. Sort of man you like to meet, any time or any place. There was always something sweet and refreshing in his face. Sort of man you'd like to be, balanced well and truly square, patient in adversity, generous when his skies were fair, Never lied to friend or foe. Never rash in word or deed. Quick to come and slow to go in a neighbor's time of need. Never rose to wealth or fame. Simply lived and simply died. But the passing of his name left the sorrow far and wide. And I won't hold the line any longer, well, thank you, Helen. My love is goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye bye, Helen. Helen Freeman this morning from Twin Falls, Idaho. Arizona, New Mexico here. Hello. Good morning. How you doing? Fine, sir, and you? Good. Well, first of all, I want to offer my condolences to Bill's family. Thank you. And Herb, do you know who you're talking to? No, I don't yet. Well, I won't tell you for a second anyway. See if you remember, it's been a little while since I talked to you. 
I'm really calling from just outside of New Mexico in El Paso, Texas. Okay. Uh, but I'm about a stone's throw from the border. In fact, is I guess it's about a half a block from where I live. So that's close so enough. Pretty close. You bet. Uh, I don't know why there's a single down here. I can't figure out whether I'm getting Oklahoma station here or y'all station. I think probably Oklahoma. Uh, it keeps on. It fades from one to the other. I have to keep adjusting the uh, tune and then adjust the volume back and forth, but it comes down on one or the other fairly good most of the time. Good. The last time I talked to you, I think, was in Vernal, Utah. Well, now you really have me. Then I talked to you from Roosevelt, Utah. No, I mean from uh, oh, Logan. Oh, wait a minute. This isn't our, uh, our uh, is it land developer? No, no, but it's pretty close. The insurance of Insurance, yeah. Okay, now I guess I, I moved out of Salt Lake up there in uh, February, uh-huh. a year ago. Uh-huh. And uh, this is the first time I've had an opportunity to call in. I've listened to you a few times. Oh, time. well, it's good to have you back. I still don't remember your name, but I remember you calling. Yeah, it's Charlie Christopher. Yes, Charlie. So I understand I kind of missed the snows this year already. You missed them? Yes. Oh, well, you should come back. We don't, we don't miss them at all, but they're, <laughs> they're sure here. Well, I tell you what, you get away from that beautiful valley there for a little while and you'll miss it. I understood they had some snow down in, uh, down in El Paso here a few days ago. Well, we had some real we- weird weather for El Paso. It started Monday morning of last week, I guess about this time exactly a week ago, and uh, I guess we had about three inches of snow Monday. It was all melted by Monday afternoon. We had another two inches Tuesday. That was melted by Tuesday afternoon. Wednesday had about four inches, melted by Wednesday afternoon. Thursday had about three, and it stayed until about noon Friday. Mm. So it was, it was the, it's real funny. They had the schools closed four days. You know, they get three inches of snow here, and everything shuts down. Oh, yeah, well, they're not, not prepared for it at all. Are they, they really don't know how to drive on it or anything. And, uh, of course, the funny thing for El Paso, it just never happens. It got, went below freezing uh, Sunday night a week ago and didn't come above freezing until Friday afternoon about 4, just a couple days ago. Hmm. And that's that's quite unusual for El Paso, although I know it wouldn't be for Salt Lake. No, no not up here. Now, but tomorrow it's going to be 65. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. We should hit around 40 today, somewhere between 40 and 45, which is kind of unusual, but then we have another snowstorm coming in on Tuesday, so... I'll tell you though, uh, people talk, this is, you know, I'm originally from Dallas, and we lived in El Paso for a while, and in Vegas, and in Salt Lake for three years. Uh-huh. And uh, I tell you, we talk to people here, and they can't understand the beauty of that valley there in those mountains. But you move away from there for a while, and you really miss it. Oh, you bet. Uh, we really fell in love with Salt Lake and Utah. Every time we travel, you know, we just can't wait to get back because it. Uh well, sometimes, you know, you can't see the trees for the forest. You're just too close, but you have to get away and kind of look at it in perspective. And, and it's great. That's why we live here. We love it. I guess so. I People I while living there, you know, have people that complain about the cold or the snow, but uh, you have a lot, a whole lot to be thankful for and appreciate there. And uh, don't realize until you move away from it for a while. Well, listen, I'm going to let you go here. Take a break. Charlie, nice to hear from you. Happy New Year to you. Fine, we'll talk to you again. Right. Bye. Bye. Charlie Christopher, and uh, well, he's in New Mexico, but across the street from uh, that's where New Mexico and Texas meet down near El Paso, and uh, so he's very close to El Paso. The uh, Idaho, Nevada, Montana, Wyoming line is uh, open for your call right now. It's millions of years old, yet it's very new. The Utah Museum of Natural History, one of the nation's finest showcases of natural wonders. Eons of time unfold in colorful and easy-to-understand exhibits and dioramas. And now you can enjoy a listening tour through the magic of taped commentaries at key displays throughout the museum. Come see and hear the Utah Museum of Natural History, U of U campus in Salt Lake City. Open seven days a week, modest admission fee. Good morning. Arizona, Arizona, New Mexico, I hope, here. Hello? Hello, Herb. Good morning, Mother. I almost broke the rules Friday night. Did you? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you didn't. <laughs> well, after the shock, I felt like I just wanted to lend my support, but of course, everybody has. Surely. Uh... 
Mrs. Curtis is the same caliber as Bill and you folks and all the nightcaps by getting on there and uh, giving her sentiments to everybody and not thinking of herself. Uh, you have always just sort of laughed me off when I said, Herb, you can't burn the candle at both ends. So you and Pat remember it now. It struck very close to home this time. Yep. And okay. Mrs. Curtis will have to take very good care of herself for that small child and her family. I don't know. Uh, I'm not a hypochondriac or anything, but I do believe in, you know, preserving your health as long as you can. Surely. I'm not a deep person like these all these others, so I'll let them say the things that should be said. Uh, I think that we should remember a person for their, for their actual things, too, their little funny things and everything that they did. Uh, Bill was always a, a great one. He, he didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings, no matter what they were doing to him. And when people would uh, go over and just clack, 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 long beyond the bell and everything, why well, he would say, I have to go, I have to go. And he wanted to follow the regulations, but he still, no matter what happened, he didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. And when people used to uh, say to him, Oh, you sound just like Herb. Your voice sounds just like Herb. Uh, you could tell it pleased him, and he'd say, Oh, I don't think I do, you know, in his in his voice, as he sounded. But you could tell it, it pleased him, you know, but he wasn't going to usurp anything from anybody else's uh, time or any anything that was due to them. Well, Bill had a beautiful voice, uh, Mildred. There was so many of the, the little things that you picked out in him right away, you know. Yes. The, there were just little everyday things, and people used to tease him about how he said yesterday. He didn't say yesterday. He'd say yesterday, and somebody asked him one time where he got that, and he said, well, I don't know. I didn't know I was any different, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, it it would please him when people would pick out those little things. But yet he he wasn't going. He never was. Uh, um, I can't think of the word I want, but he just he just never was trying to be an upstart or anything. He was he was always so courteous and humble, no matter what happened to him. Yes. And I think we should remember people for these these things, the little things that they really were that that brought pleasure to and made made people remember them and think about them to so Well, he was a real pro, longer than he, uh, in every sense of the word, and so very highly respected in the broadcast industry, not only here in Salt Lake, but uh, in other places he's been, uh, in, in Montana, in Idaho, in California when he was on the coast, and part of a, a vanishing... Uh, yeah, well, yeah. It's, it's these little things that he said and did that, that brought that about. I yes. mean, it, that made him that way, you know, and made we were, him so well remembered. We were so highly complimented that he was part of our staff because he, uh, uh, again, because of the caliber of man he was. Yeah, because I... Until I got into this nightcap, got involved with this nightcap thing, I had just about... I had just about lost confidence in a lot of people. I thought everybody was nip-witted and scattered brain nutty. But you get into something like this and you find out there's many, many thousands that are not, <laughs> which is certainly good to know, you know, yes. that there are people still left like that because there's sure a lot of scroungers in the world today, which isn't a very good way of saying things, but that's my way of saying things. Uh, the interference down here tonight is terrible. I don't know what it is. And that station that is just completely knocking KSL out down here, I haven't been able to find out and figure out what it was, but it's a Mexican station. Over the border? Well, I can't tell where it is. It's, uh, it's been, oh, well, it practically knocked KSL out down here for over three months now. Hmm. 